Hello and welcome. Uh, today we're going to go over a very brief introduction on how to use the command line. And by command line, I mean a Unix-like shell environment. Um, today I'll be using Bash, but what we are going to learn here will translate to other um, Unix-like shells um, as well. All right, if you want to be able to follow along with these slides as I go, you should be able to scan this QR code um, to bring up this website. Uh, before we dive into actually using the command line, let's talk a little bit about why uh, you might want to learn how to use the command line. So most of the time when you're communicating with your computer, uh, whether you know it or not, you're probably using graphical user interfaces or GUIs for short. So whenever you have a window open on your computer where there's places for you to click or other graphical gestures for you to do, um, that, is a, that is a GUI. Um, you can think of a web browser or when you're working on a Word document, you are working in a GUI um, when you're doing so. So you're probably very familiar with these even if you didn't know, if you, even if you didn't know them by name. Okay, so these GUIs are translators. They are translating your clicks and other graphical gestures that you're making into instructions for your computer. And this is very intuitive and it works very well for simple tasks like working on a Word document or listening to music, um, but it doesn't scale well if there's a lot of things you have to get done very quickly. So for example, let's say you have thousands of files on your computer with a particular piece of information in each of them that you need to gather and analyze in some way. Okay, doing that with a GUI is gonna take forever and it's gonna be extremely tedious. You're gonna have to open all of these files one at a time, find the piece of information, copy, paste it, whatever. It's gonna be a lot of clicking and um, a lot of tedium and you're likely to make a lot of mistakes along the way. Um, so this is a, sort of a use case where the um, command line can be very powerful. Just as an analogy, um, if you go on vacation to a foreign country, um, a translator can be very helpful in helping you get around and you know, order things for menus. Um, all is well when you're on vacation if you have a translator. But if you actually move to that country for a job, um, and in that job you're going to be interacting with hundreds of people every day, the translator is only going to get you so far, right? You're going to want to learn the language so that you can um, sort of navigate this new country more efficiently. <clears throat> and that's exactly what we want to do here. What we're going to do by learning the command line is actually learn the language that the GUIs are using to tell the computer what to do. So we're going to be removing the middleman, removing the translator, which are these GUIs, and we're going to talk more directly to our computer, which is going to make us more efficient in getting lots of stuff done. Okay, a little bit about these slides uh, before we start actually using the command line. Um, Whenever you see a box like this and you see this dollar sign, this just represents that we are typing at the command prompt. So the dollar sign is the prompt itself. We don't actually type that. Okay, and just as an example, I have a bash terminal open here over to the left and you can see my command prompt right there. So this is where I start typing. I don't actually type the dollar sign. All right, so let's get started. The first thing that we want to talk about is just what is a command? What are the different parts of it? So here's an example of a command that we might type, um, echo dash E, hello world. So the very first element of this command line that we wrote is the command itself. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit later why it might give you a little bit more intuition to think of these as programs. Okay, I'll explain why that is a little bit later. Uh, but most of the time you're going to see these being referred to as commands. After the command, um, optionally, you can have what are called options or flags. And what these are, are um, ways of modifying the behavior of the command that we're using. And then last is our what's called arguments. Here we just have one argument. It's a string called hello. It's a string that has the letters hello world. Okay, so we can type this over here at the command prompt. We have our command. That's always the first thing we type. And then we have um, dash E. That's an option. That's going to modify the behavior of echo. And then we're going to type in whatever we want here. Okay. 
And echo is just a command that sort of does exactly what it says. It echoes whatever you type. And what it's doing is it's just printing whatever you give it, whatever arguments you give echo, it prints to the standard output. And so we just see it reappear here as output. Okay. And um, just to show you that um, that dash E is optional, right? It, essentially by doing this, just typing echo space hello, we're just using the default options for the echo command. We're not trying to modify its behavior in any way. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yes. Hello world was the argument. Okay. Uh, uh, precision matters. Okay. So the spelling case and spaces really matter when we're typing at the command line. And this can trip people up when they're first trying, starting to use um, the command line um, is that you have to be careful in how you type your commands. Um, there is no wiggle room here. There's no gray area. You either type it correctly or not. And just to kind of show you that, I have echo hello here. If I type um, echo dash e hello, that works just fine. But if I was to mistype this and put a space between the dash and the e, then I get different behavior because then this is no longer recognized as an option. It's treated as an argument. So what this is, is I now have my command in three arguments, dash, e, and hello. All echo does is just take whatever arguments I give it and write it to standard output. And that's what it's doing. Not what we intended if we wanted to actually use the option dash E. So spaces matter. Um, case matters. If I do echo hello with a capital E, it's gonna say, I don't, <laughs> this doesn't compute. I don't know what this means. I don't know what capital E-C-H-O means. <clears throat> and likewise, if I misspell it as E-C-O, also, it's going to say this command is not found. Okay, so, so spelling, spaces, uh, case, all matter uh, when we're typing at the command line. It takes a little bit of getting used to uh, for people that aren't, you know, haven't used the command line very much. It ends up being a very good thing because there's only one correct way to sort of do things most of the time, but it takes a little getting used to. All right, so one thing that I want to point out very early is how to get help, okay? So when you're in the command line, you know you wanna use, in this example, I wanna use the command echo, and I know there's an option that I can use, but I don't really remember what it is. I can use um, man. So this is a command here called man, and it's short for manual. It's gonna, what it's gonna do is gonna, it's gonna open the user manual for the command echo. And it's gonna open it in a program called less, L-E-S-S, -S, and to get around that environment, um, which is basically just a content reader. We can navigate using our arrow keys or the J and K keys. And when we're done, we just hit Q to exit the manual. And I just want to point out here that we've, uh, this is another command, right? But now man is the command and echo is the argument. So we had just typed a command where echo was the command. But I told you that the first thing you type is always the command. So the, the man here, the manual is now the command, and the second thing is an argument. So echo is just an argument here. So let's just demonstrate that over here. I want to open the manual. I want to look at the manual entry for um, echo. And it does that. And I can scroll up and down with either my arrow keys or J and K. Um, and you know, there, this is just showing me the, the optional options that I can use. And there's that dash E that I was using before. And it's not important on, you know, what that actually does. It's just an example. Okay. So whenever you're, you know, whenever you need help with a command, uh, man space, and then the command name is a way to open the user manual for that command, which can be very helpful. <clears throat> All right. So the next thing that we want to talk about is the what, what we call the file system. Okay, so that is all the stuff that's on our computer. How is it arranged? And how do we navigate all of this stuff? And we do that using what are called paths, okay? So here is a nice um, illustration showing that the file system on your computer is set up 
like a nested hierarchy of folders, or we actually call them directories. Some people like to call them folders because every GUI we've ever used in our life always shows directories using the folder icon. And so if you like to think of them as folders, that's fine. <clears throat> okay, so there is a root to our file system, and that's just the sort of the folder that has everything in it. Every file in folder on our computer is within the root directory or root folder. And everything is sort of just um, nested within folders within that, in this hierarchy. Okay. And so this, um, let's just play around over here to get a feel for this. So one command that we can use first is PWD. That stands for print working directory. And what that is doing is showing me what folder, or what directory I currently am in. So when we're using the command line, we are always somewhere in the file system. You're always in a directory or folder. Um, and PWD is going to show you where you are. It's a very, very useful command. Just to sort of, OK, if you're, if you're moving around the file system a lot, sometimes it just is helpful to type PWD and just uh, gain a sense of where you are in this file system. You know, looking over to the right, you know, if you're, if you're navigating around a lot, you could be anywhere in here and PWD will show you where you are. Okay. And so I'm currently in a folder called home. I, I'm going to use, you know, um, the technical term here is directory, but I'm going to try to use folder because I think people that are new to the command line it's easier to think of these as folders. Okay, so I'm in uh, a folder called home, and then within that is a folder called Jamie. So these slashes are what are separating different levels of this nested folder system. So the folder Jamie is nested within home. Okay, and so the very, um, the, the catch-all folder, the, the, the root folder that has everything inside of it, you can access by just using the slash. Okay, so if I do ls, so this is just a command that says you know, list what's in this folder. Okay, so it's just short for list. So I'm saying list everything that's in my root folder. And it's going to show me all of the folders that are in that root folder. And we can see that one of them is called home. So if I do list slash home, then I'm going to go, OK, within the root directory, within the root folder, I want to see what's in home. And we can see that there inside of that is just a single folder named Jamie. And that's my, um, that's my home folder. That's my sort of user account on this computer. Everything is in there. OK, and so what this is called is a path. It's just a sort of a, an address of somewhere on our file system. And the syntax we use for it is called a path. And we use slashes to separate the folders. Um, and that's how we can um, navigate this file system. Okay? And specifically, this is what's called a full path. We'll talk more about paths um, right now and get a sense of you know, what the f we're going to talk about full paths and relative paths. And that'll give us um, a little bit more intuition about what this file system is and how can we move around it and navigate it um, um, in a way that's, that's, uh, that's easy to remember and easy to do. All right, so now if I just type ls without any, argu without any arguments, I actually get the same output as this. Because I know by typing print working directory, I am in my home folder, home Jamie. And so I can either say ls and give the full path to that folder, and it'll show me what's in it. Or I can just type ls, and by default, it's going to show me what's in the folder I'm currently in. And since I'm in this folder, it's going to show me the same content. OK, so now let's make some new folders within our home folder. Oh, and one thing that I should point out um, so that you can follow along is when you have been sort of typing on the command line, your output might look different than mine. That's because in, on different operating systems, the file system 
um, is a little bit different. <clears throat> it can be arranged differently. So yours, um, so instead of home, it might be users, um, or there might be other, some, some other variations. But the concept is the same. PWD is print working directory is going to show you where you are. <clears throat> Everything is still going to be within this root. Um, just the names and the arrangement of the folders might look a little bit different, but the concept is the same. So don't get too tripped up by that. Okay. So um, you should be in your home folder whenever you sort of open a new um, command line terminal by default, um, you should be in your home folder. So when you type PWD, it should show you sort of your, um, your home folder. Okay, so now what we're going to do is within that folder is we're going to make a couple of new folders. And we're going to use the make directory um, command to do that. So make dir is just short for make directory. Um, and so I'm going to put do make dir space foo space bar. Okay, so this is the command. Foo is, an, is the first argument. Bar is the second argument. Because there's a space between them, these are two separate arguments. Okay. So nothing seems to have happened. But if I type ls again, now I can see that foo and bar are now here. They are, um, they are directories um, or folders within my home folder now. I just created them. And just to kind of reiterate that space matters. So if I did this as foo bar, without that space, this gets treated as a single argument. And now there's a foo bar um, folder in that, in that directory, which is not what I intended. I wanted two separate folders. If we want to remove a directory, we can do rm dir. That's, that's short for remove directory. I'm going to remove that foo bar because I just mistyped there and I didn't put my space in and I got the wrong output. Um, RM dir will only remove an empty directory. Since we haven't put any, anything in there, it will happily remove that um, foo bar that I put in there. OK. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can move around uh, the file system. So the first thing that we're going to do is do cd um, foo. And so cd is a command that's short for change directory. So change folder. I want to change folder into foo. Okay. And so what it does is it goes, okay, when I, after I type this, the argument is foo. Uh, it looks in my current directory and sees that there's a foo um, folder there. And it goes, okay, you want to be there? I'll put you there. So now I am inside the folder foo. If I do ls, I'll see there's nothing in here. I just created this folder. There's nothing inside of it yet. OK, so now let's say I'm done. I'm, you know, whatever I wanted to do in the folder foo, I'm now done with. I want to go back out of this folder. I can do cd space dot dot with no space between the dots. And what the dot dot means is I want to move up into the parent folder of the current folder that I'm in. OK, so let me show you that graphically over here. So you know, uh, here's, um, actually, let's go ahead and draw this out. So let's just draw out a little bit of my file system here. So we just talked about how there's this slash, which represents the very root folder of the entire system. Within that, I am within the home folder. Within that, I am within the Jamie folder. And I've just within that, I've created two new folders, foo and bar. Okay. And so now I this is where I currently am in the file system. I am inside this folder. I want to go back to my home folder. I want to move up one folder into um, the, the folder that contains the folder that I'm currently in. And that's exactly what this will do. So cd space dot dot saying, I want to, I want to go up one folder. Um, and I'm sorry, so I, I shouldn't say up. So <laughs> it's a little bit confusing. 
So computer scientists like to think of the file system as a tree. They use the tree metaphor. Um, but for some reason, they like to think of trees as being upside down. So uh, the root is at the very top of the file system, and you move down from there as, as you go sort of further into nested folders. So I try to catch myself, but I tend to use that language. So when I say move up, that's moving actually towards the root, which is not at all how a tree grows. But um, uh, computer scientists have always used this terminology. Even though they use the tree metaphor, they, for some reason, flip the tree upside down. But really what, I want to, what I'm doing, it doesn't matter up or down, is I just want to move into the, out of the current folder that I'm in into the folder that contains it. Okay, and that's what this CD space dot dot is going to do for me. So if I do PWD, I'm back in my home folder. Okay, so I'm just going to do this again. I can go into foo, print working directory. This is where I am now. And I can move back out of it. All right. Okay. And just as um, what We've already sort of used paths already. You've actually used what's called a relative path, and you didn't even know it, okay? So let me show you what I mean by that. So when we typed CD foo, we moved, I'm gonna use my arrow over here, we moved from here to here. And that was a relative path, because we just typed foo. Um, our computer knew what we were talking about, because there was a foo directory within the current directory that we were in. Okay, what we could have done is actually type out explicitly that I want to go to foo. And that is within my home folder, within the Jamie folder, foo. And that'll actually get me to the same place. This is a full path. This, when I just type foo, is a relative path. Okay, so a full path is always starting from the root and it explicitly types out the full path to you know, whatever file or folder you either want to go to or want to do something with, okay? Where if we are typing a path and it doesn't start with this root slash, that's what's called a relative path. It's relative to where we are uh, on the file system right now, where we are on the command prompt, okay? Okay, so now, I am inside of the foo directory. <coughs> um, and let's just try to go, let's say I want to go from foo to bar. You might think, well, I want to change directory to bar. So cd space bar. That doesn't work because bar is not inside um, so I'm currently within the foo folder. And bar is not inside of that folder. It's somewhere else. So when I just type cd bar, my computer does not know what I'm talking about. It's saying, I don't see anything that's called bar here. Okay? So there's two ways um, that we can sort of fix this. There's actually more than two, but let me show you a couple. So two things is that I could actually type out explicitly that I want to go into this directory, and that's within my root, within home, within Jamie, within bar. And that would work. I'm not gonna hit enter here, because I'm gonna show you an easier way of, of doing this. So that's the full path. I can always type the full path to get to where I wanna go. But it's a lot easier um, if I, I'm moving somewhere sort of close by on the file system to use a relative path. And how I do that is, CD bar didn't work, but what I can say is, okay, I want to move into my, the, the parent folder of the folder I am currently in. So that's going to say I, I'm currently in foo. That's saying I want to move, relatively speaking, into whatever folder is containing the folder I'm con currently in. So that will move me to here. And then I can say from there, I want to go into bar. So what I'm doing is saying, I want to back out of this folder into the parent folder and then move into a, a different folder in that folder called bar. And this will work. 
Now I'm in the bar folder. I could have also been explicit. That will always work. No matter where I am on the file system, this will always work because I just gave the full explicit path to bar. However, I can all, it's often much easier to use relative paths because um, the full path can get very long if you're sort of deeply, um, if you're deeply nested within the file system. And so we can always use these relative paths. If I want to move back into foo, I just say, okay, I want to back out into the parent directory of the bar folder I'm currently in, and there should be a directory within that called foo, and there is, okay? So that's just giving you some sense of, of what full paths are and what relative paths are and how we can use those to navigate our file system. Okay, one other thing that I wanna show you quickly is that your home folder is, spe it's special in a few ways. It's not really special, it's just another folder in your file system, but there are shortcuts um, to get there. Okay, so um, the home folder is where you are by default when you open your command line terminal. And there are all, also some um, shortcuts on how to get back there. So for example, if I do change directory and I don't give any arguments, uh, what it's gonna do is it's going to do, so, it's going to execute a default behavior, okay? And what that default is, is it's, I, what I'm saying is I want to change directory to my home folder. So the home folder is sort of the default. So just to kind of prove that that's what happened, I'm in my home folder now. So no matter where you are on your file system, if you just type CD without any arguments, it's just going to put you in your home folder. Okay. So let me go back into foo. There's a few other ways that I can do this. I can also do CD tilde. So that is, you have to hit shift and hit that key that's above your tab. That's the tilde um, symbol. That is a shortcut for um, your home as well. So CD with no arguments or CD with that tilde um, uh, will get you to your home folder. So this was exactly, so just, just prove, prove to you that that's what happened. There we go. And so just typing CD, CD tilde and CD home Jamie are all synonymous. These all will do the same thing. So there's just several ways for you to reference your home folder um, from anywhere um, in the file system. Okay, so I am in my home folder now. There's also one other way to do this. Okay. All right, so let's move into foo. I can also do um, this. So dollar sign and capital H-O-M-E. Okay, this is what's called a variable. And the, the, the value of this variable is my home folder. So if I do that and do PWD, print working directory, I'm back in my home folder. Okay, so this, this brings us to another concept of what is called a, a variable um, within the bash environment. Okay, so what I can do is just say, okay, well, I wanna see what is, what is home, right? This, this is just a variable that was set by um, um, the command line environment when you started it up. And you can use echo to say, I, I just wanna see what, what the value of this variable is, okay? And it's just gonna show us that, ah, when, when you type this variable, um, this is what it means. This is, the, this is the value that this variable has. You know, root home Jamie, and that's my home directory or home folder. Okay, so um, this will come up again. This is what's called a variable. Um, so um, and just to kind of show you an example is I can do X equals um, hello, All right? So I just set a variable called X to the value, and it's just a string, hello. And I can check to see, okay, you know, is there a variable called X? And if so, you know, what, what is its value? With echo, and I can see that it's, that it's hello, okay? 
So when you define a variable, you don't use the dollar sign. But when you want to get the, the value for that variable, you have to use the dollar sign, just like we did up here. Because if we didn't, if we just did echo x, we just get x, right? Because that's what echo is supposed to do. Whatever you give it, it echoes. Unless you use this special character as the dollar sign. Um, and that says, OK, I want you to echo. I want you to echo with what's the value of x, the variable x. And that's what it's doing there. OK, so just a little crash course on what variables are um, in, in Bash or in a Unix-like shell. OK, so one more thing I want to show you about um, the file system. So let's go back into Foo. OK, so um, when I wanted to go into bar, from, so now I'm here. So let's go over here. I'm in Foo, and I wanted to move to bar. I showed you that I could do that by being fully explicit and using a full path to bar. Right? I showed you that. Let's not do that right now. I showed you how I could use a relative path of going, OK, I want to back out into the parent directory, parent folder, and then within that, go into bar. Right, and I showed you how that worked. That's a relative path. Now we can use, take advantage of these shortcuts to easily specify a path that's relative to our home folder. Okay, so I, what I'm going to do now is show you that I can go like this. So what I can do is tilde, which represents home, right? So this um, equals this home Jamie. And then so what I'm saying is I want to change directory to my home folder and more and within my home folder, I want to move into bar. Okay. And that worked. Okay, that's because this tilde represents this. So relative to my home folder, I wanted to move in into a folder bar that's within it. And, and that's and that's what I did here. Okay, so if we want to move back to foo, right, I can always say I want to back out one directory and move to foo. And if I want to move back to bar, I can do this. Or I can, since I know bar is in my home folder, I, I can use the shortcut of tilde to represent my home folder. Okay, so just a, um, a useful shortcut. So if, if if you're somewhere on your file system that's far away from your home directory, if, you know, you're very deeply nested within your home directory, or maybe you're even outside of your, of your home, home folder, uh, and you want to get somewhere and it's, it's you know, either in your home folder or very close to it um, with, inside of it, you can easily take advantage of this shortcut. So the tilde representing your home directory. All right, so let's move on to our next topic now. And that is, so what are commands? Okay. So, so far they've just been these magic things that whenever we type them at, whenever it's the first thing we type at the command line, stuff happens. But what are they really? Okay, so I, I told you earlier that you can just think of these as programs and the the why I told you that is these are just files on your computer that you can execute. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, let's try it out. So if I do, so we've been using PWD a lot, which is showing us our current working directory. There's another command called which, which is going to show us where PWD is. So I'm going to say which, that's the command, pwd is the argument in this case, and it's going to show me that pwd is a file on my, on my computer that is within root, within a USR um, folder, within bin, and there's this file in that folder called pwd. So when I type pwd as a command, this is actually what's being run, OK? Uh, let's just do another example. So if I do which, we've been using ls a lot for listing the contents of a directory. That's just a file in the same folder. 
So within the root of my file system, there's a folder USR. Within that's a folder bin, B-I-N. And within that is this file called ls. All right, and that's what is actually being executed when I type the ls command. Um, just to give you a sense of that. So what we can do is I can do ls. Well, let me back out. So I'm going to move back up into my home directory so there's actually some content to look at. Right? So now I'm back in my home directory. Um, and there's, there's a bunch of stuff here. Right? What is actually happening when I type ls is this. Okay, I get the same. I get the same output, right? So I'm typing the user bin ls, and that is executing this file ls, and that is exactly what's happening when I just type ls. Okay, just to sort of get a little meta on you. What about which? Well, if I do which which, it just shows me that which. When I type which, all I'm doing is executing this file on my computer, and it's showing me where that file is. All right, so these commands aren't magic. They are files, they're programs inside of files on my computer. And so when I type the names of these commands, um, those, um, what the shell is doing is it's finding those files and running them, running that program, and, it's, you know, ha and that's what's causing the action to happen. It's not magic. We're just running programs on our computer. Okay. So, you know, like I showed you up here, I could have done this. Let's just kind of demonstrate. I could write the full path to which, right? And that does the same thing as just doing um, which ls. Right? The reason that I don't have to type the full path to which is because um, this folder, um, user bin, is in my path. Okay? So what is this capital P-A-T-H? Well, it's a variable, um, and it's an, uh, a variable that is set by your command line environment when you start it up. Okay, so what we can do is just do echo, dollar sign, P-A-T-H. So remember, echo is just saying, whatever arguments I give you, just print it to the standard output. Here I'm saying what I want to see at the standard output is the value of this variable called path. Okay, yours is going to look different than mine, almost undoubtedly. Uh, but what it is, is this is just a bunch of paths that are linked together by colons, okay? So here's a path, here's another path, here's another path. So just a bunch of paths, the string, and all that string is is a bunch of paths that are linked together by colons. So when I type um, ls, for example, so let's go back up and just say, um, you know, uh, which, sorry, let's just do which, ls. The reason I don't have to do this every time I want to do use this program, I can just type ls. What's happening here is when I type ls, what my computer is doing in the background is going, okay, he just entered this command ls. Okay, what does that mean? What is what does what does he want us to do? And so it goes, okay, this is not a full path, right? It, it, it didn't see this slash at the beginning. So my computer knows that this is not a full path. And it's a command. It's a command, and it's not a full path. So what it does is it goes, okay, he's telling us to do ls. Um, let's see if we can figure out what he wants us to do. And so what it's going to do is it's going to look through these folders one by one and by these folders, I mean the folders that we saw when we typed in echo path, right? So here's the first one. What my computer does, it goes, okay, ls, what's ls? Let's look in here. Is there something called ls in this folder? Home Jamie environment bin. No? Okay, let's try the next folder. Is it in here? Nope. Okay, let's try the next one. Nope. 
Okay, and it keeps going until it gets here. And it looks in this folder, user bin. And it goes, aha, there's a file in here. And it's called ls. And it's executable. So don't worry about what executable means. It just has special file permissions that allows it to be executed. So my computer is, you know, and it does this every time you type ls, right? It's going, okay, what's ls? Okay, can I find it? Is it in any of these folders? Uh, saying, no, 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 oh, I found it. It's in this folder here, user bin. Uh, and so then once it's done that, it is actually doing this for me. It found the full path for me and it's executing this command, okay? So there's no magic here. Um, every command that we type, that's all, there's not entirely true, there are a few exceptions, but almost all of the commands that you type are just files on your computer. Um, and when you type them, your computer finds that file and runs it, right? And it's a program. Um, so that should sort of demystify this a little bit in terms of what are these commands that we're using? They're just programs somewhere on your computer. And this is how your computer finds them for you when you type them. It just looks through these directories. Um, so you're gonna hear a lot about um, path, your path. And that's just talking about this variable, um, capital P-A-T-H. Um, and if these are the directories, your computer will look in to find commands or programs to run. So like I said, the first thing you type at the command line is special. Um, and that's called a command, or I like to think of them as program. And so when you type that, what your computer does, it goes, okay, let's look in these directories. I'm just going to do that one at a time and see if we can find what this is and what he wants us to do. Okay. So that's what's happening when we type these commands. Um, they're just files on our computer that are being executed. There's no magic here. All right. All right, so the last thing that I wanted to go over in this very um, brief intro um, to the command line is just how to use for loops, okay? So let's just use some examples here um, and, and just learn by doing. So we're just gonna do four x in one, two, sorry, space there, two, three, four, do echo, hello, done, okay? Just go ahead and do it. Oh, we get four hellos that are spit out to standard output. So um, when I say standard output, that's just the output that we see sort of presented to us. Um, that's called the standard output. Okay, so what's happening here? So what we're saying is 4x in 1, 2, 3, 4, do echo hello done. Okay? So it's the, the main elements of a for loop here is for something, and I'll get back to this, do something else, and, I'm, and then done. So what this is doing is it's saying 4x in 1, 2, 3, 4. So what this means is that what it's going to do is it's going to set a variable x equal to 1, and then execute this. And then it's going to loop around and set x equal to 2 and do this again. And then loop around, set x to 3, do this again. And then it's going to finally set x to 4 and do this again. And then when it's out of sort of things that we gave it, uh, it, it finishes. Okay? So it's just going to loop around and execute whatever is in between do and done, however many times that we sort of asked it to do it. Okay, so that is a very simple for loop. Okay, let's, let's type this again, just so that I can show you what I meant. So 4x in, 1, 2, 3, 4, do echo, dollar sign x, done. So when I told you that x was being set to these as for each time around the loop, what I meant by that was very, it's exactly that. So each time the computer sort of goes around this loop, it's setting this variable x to um, these values. The first time it runs through, x is 1, 
And so when we ask it to echo X, it echoes one. Then it loops around again, but sets X to two and echoes two. And then it loops around again, sets X to three, and then loops around again and sets X to four. So each time X is echo, echoed to the standard output, we see one, two, three, four, okay? This is just a very basic for loop. Um, but now let's make things a little bit more interesting. Let's make a file, okay? So what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna put the word how into a file called file1.txt, okay? So what's happening here? Well, we know what echo is. Whenever we do echo, so I'm gonna simplify this first. So echo space how, just um, prints how to the standard output, okay? But now I'm using what's called a redirection. What I'm saying is echo how, but instead of printing it to the standard output, redirect that output into a file called file1.txt. And so what's gonna happen is it's gonna create a file and put that output into that file rather than putting it to the standard output, okay? So we did not see how this time, but now if we type ls, we'll see that there's now a, a file called file1.txt. And if we use the command cat, which is actually short for concatenate, but if you only have one file, it just shows us what's inside that file. So it prints the contents of that file to the standard output. So by doing cat file dot, file one dot text, it's showing us that inside that file is one line and it's just got the word how, okay? So this is a redirection. Instead of just echoing how to the standard output, we're saying echo how, but redirect it to a file. And now we have a file with the word how inside of it. It's just a, a basic text file, okay. Now let's make two more files. So I'm gonna do echo r. I'm gonna redirect that to file2.txt. So that's gonna make another new file, file2.txt, and that's gonna have the word r in it. And now I'm gonna echo u question mark to a third file, okay? File3.txt. Now if I do ls, I've got three files in my current working directory file1.txt, file2.txt, and file3.txt. Since I just gave the file name when I did the redirection, these are relative paths, and it's relative to the directory or the folder I'm currently working in, right? I, my current working directory, which I can see with PWD, is my home folder. So now inside of that home folder, there are three new files, file1, file2, and file3.txt. Okay. So where are we going with this? Well, now I can show you that we can actually do, we don't just have to do for loops with numbers. What I can do is I can say for f in file1.txt, file2.txt, file3.txt, for f in those three files, do cat dollar sign f done. Okay, so what's gonna happen here? Well, the first time around this loop, this for loop is gonna set the variable f equal to file1.txt, okay? And, and then it's gonna execute the do part of the for loop. And that is just saying cat or show me the contents of dollar sign f. And so what the shell is gonna do, is gonna go, oh, dollar sign f, that is equal to file1.txt, okay? And so it's just gonna cat show the contents of file1.txt. Then it's gonna loop around again, but the next time it's gonna say f is now equal to the next thing, file2.txt. And then it's gonna show cat the content of that file. And then it's gonna loop around again, set f equal, the, the variable f equal to file3.txt, and it's gonna cat the contents of that file. Okay, so let's do it. How are you? There we go. It showed me the contents of file1.txt, then file2.txt, and then file3.txt. Okay. 
Okay, so we just used a for loop to do something with three different files. We didn't do anything very interesting, but um, anything that you can dream up that you can do with a file, we could do with any number of files you can imagine by using this for loop construct. So at the beginning of this, I said, well, imagine a scenario where you had a thousand files and you had to extract a piece of information from all of them. Well, doing that with GUIs would have um, been extremely boring and taken forever. But now you're starting to see that with just some basic understanding of the command line, we could easily um, do a lot with a bunch of files very quickly. Okay. All right, so you might be thinking, well, but I'd still have to type out the name of all those files. If there's a thousand of them, that is terrible. And you're correct. Um, but we can use wildcards to make this even more efficient. So instead of typing out the names of all of these files, what I can do is do for f in file question mark dot text, do cat dollar sign f done. Okay. Execute that. I get the same output. Huh? What's going on here? Well, what's happening is this question mark is a special character in the shell, and it means it's a wild card. It's saying for f in any file that is has this sort of pattern where it's the name of the file is f i l e then something i don't know what it is dot t x t do this and these three file names file one dot text file two dot text and file three dot text match that pattern right so they just have different um, numbers in place of this question mark. And so what it's doing is it's saying, oh, he wants to loop over anything, any files in the current directory that match this pattern. And that's exactly what it does. And so what it's actually doing, so we can use ls here again. So these wild cards, wild cards are not special to a for loop. We can use them elsewhere. So remember that, um, let me just show you this, that ls show, it lists content of directories. But it can be more specific, right? We can say, I want to know, I want to see lists, um, anything in this directory that's called file1.txt. So instead of showing me everything in directory, it just shows me file1.txt, OK? But if I want to see other files that are similar to that, what I can say is, show me any files in this directory um, that have this pattern. They start with file and they have some other, some character, I don't care what it is, and then they end with dot text. There we go, it's showing me file one dot text, file two dot text, and file three dot text. And so what the shell is actually doing is it's actually um, expanding this wildcard before the command gets executed. Okay, so when we typed this for loop up here, this didn't get executed. What happened is the shell first sees this wildcard and goes, okay, there's a wildcard here, let's try to expand it out. And so the shell, before it actually executed the for loop, expanded out that for loop into this. So we didn't have to type it. It figured this out on its own, right? So we use this wildcard the shell first expands that wildcard out and then executes the for loop. Same thing down here. What it did here when we did file um, ls file question mark dot text is it first said, okay, there's a wildcard here. What I'm going to do in the background um, for Jamie here is expand that wildcard out. There's three files that match this pattern. So what I'm actually going to execute is ls file1.txt, file2.txt, file3.txt. Okay, so that's how these wildcard works. Okay, um, and these wildcards can be even more flexible. So what I can do here is do for f, for, for f in f star.txt, do cat dollar sign f done. Okay. 
So this is very similar to what we did up here. I've just used a different wildcard. And I'm going to get the same output. Um, and the same thing if I did ls f star dot text. I'm going to get the same output. But this wildcard is different. Okay. Um, what it is uh, doing is um, saying, okay, it's saying what he wants here is any files in the current directory that match this pattern. And this pattern is different. What this asterisk rep represents is any, any number of any characters. So this pattern means any file that starts with F and ends with um, .txt. Okay, so I'm just going to show you an example of that. I'm going to use the command touch to create a new file called foobar.txt. Okay. Um, actually, um, well, let's put some content in foobar. So let's do echo. Let's do echo good to foobar.txt. So now we have. In our current directory, we have our file one, file two, file three, and now we have this foobar.txt, okay? Now, if we go back up and we do this for a loop with the file question mark.txt, we get the exact same output we got before because this, this pattern only matches files that have start with file, have one character of any type, you know, there's some character here we don't know, and then dot text. And so that doesn't match foobar.txt. But if we do, sorry, let me, if we do this one again, for f in f star.txt, so remember the star is different than the question mark. So the question mark represents, uh, I don't know the character here, but it's just one unknown character. Here, it's anything goes. Right, any number of unknown characters can go in the, in place of this. So any file that starts with f and ends with t, uh, .txt is fair game. And now that means that when we type this in, this gets expanded out into file one .txt, file two .txt, file three .txt, and foobar .txt because that matches that pattern too. Okay. All right. So that was just a very sort of fast crash course into the command line, not meant to be comprehensive, just meant to get your feet wet um, and get you a little bit familiar with basic concepts. And now you've learned uh, just enough to be dangerous on the command line, which you've actually learned how to use a for loop. Um, all right. Um, and just to show you one more thing uh, before, before we end this is, I just want to point out that when you've been typing this, if you've been following along and typing at the command line, you are actually writing code. You are writing shell code. In my case, I'm using bash. So I am writing um, computer code in the language of bash, which is the shell that I'm using. What do I mean by that? Well, um, let's make a file and put some of the commands that we've been typing at the command line into it. Okay. So um, here, uh, feel, I, I show nano being used to create a new file called mybashscript.sh with you know, my bash and script are separated by underscores. Um, but you don't have to use nano. You can use any text um, editor that you want, that you're comfortable with. So I'm actually going to use Vim. That's my preferred text editor. If you've never heard of Vim, and that's new to you, don't use Vim. Okay, so if you're new to this, um, uh, well, actually, you know what? Let's just use Nano. Okay, so if if you if you're already familiar with text editors, you can use whatever text editor you want. If um, you don't know what I'm talking about, just use Nano. It's almost undoubtedly on your system, and it's a relatively easy um, text editor to use. Okay. Okay, so what? We are now inside of Nano, which is just a text editor. Okay, so we have created a new file called mybashscript.sh, and now we're going to we're going to type some type some content into that. So let's type in "Hello world." Okay, 
And for, let's just do a simple for loop. This is, so these are just a couple of things that we've been working on, right? So, oops, oops, uh, sorry. I'm so used to um, using uh, Vim that I'm somewhat clumsy inside of Nano, but um, that's okay. I will fix my mistake here. Okay, so these are commands that we've already entered today, right? So we've we've done echo hello world and we've done this simple for loop. Now we're just putting them inside a file, okay? And so if you're in um, nano, the first thing that we're gonna do is type control O and that's gonna save what we've just written. So do control O, that's control, basically write out the contents that I've just written. And it's gonna confirm that you're writing it to my bash script, just hit enter. And so we just saved the file. Okay, we just saved the content that we added. Now we can just do control X. Okay, now we're back to the command line. And what I can do is just do LS, just confirm that I have this new file called my bash script.sh. And I can use the cat command to show me what's inside of that file. And sure enough, it's just the stuff we, that we just typed in. No surprise there. Now, what you can do is you've written a program. You've written a computer program in the language, um, in my case, bash, because that's what I'm using, but you might be using some other shell. To prove that to you, we can run this program. So I'm saying, okay, there's a command on my computer called bash, and that's just a program that uh, runs bash code. And so I'm saying, okay, bash, Here's a, a file and it's got commands in it for you to execute. And there we go. It does the same thing as if we had typed those commands ourselves on the command line, okay? But they're in a script, they're in a file. And when we tell bash to execute that file, it just goes line by line and does the same thing just as if we were typing them into the command line ourselves, okay? Um, so this entire time you've been writing computer code. So when you are typing at the command line, you are writing shell code. Okay, you can just as easily put, the, put what you're typing into a file and you can execute that file and it'll do the same thing. Okay, so you are now writing computer code. All right, so that's all I wanted to show you in this crash course on command line today. Um, some resources that you might want to check out. Um, Software Carpentry uh, has a nice uh, introduction to the shell um, that I can recommend that if you want to dig into this a little bit more, that's a good starting point. Uh, and I'd just like to thank uh, NSF for um, keeping the lights on and, and, and letting me do this. All right, well, thanks for uh, making it to the end of this video. I hope uh, this was helpful.